Lego is made out of Lego. Megazord is made out of the other Power Ranger robots combined. And experts say that if you zoom in far enough, you'll see our very universe is made out of tiny vibrating sperms called strings. And if you string too much, you'll go blind. Ah, oh, hi, I'm Sam Tucker. And if you're unsmart like me, you may be wondering, how can the universe really be made up of tiny little strings? But then again, if you think about it, my shirt is made out of cotton strings. So what if strings made up all the shirt in the universe. Now that's a thought worth exploring. Okay, first things first. To understand string theory, we're gonna have to start by thinking very small. Wow, I'm now tiny. Uh, call me lowercase Sam. Right, so everything you're looking at here, this mug, me, my glorious hair, it's all made of atoms. Here, let me pull one out of my ass. Ooh, there we are. Okay, here's one of my atoms. Now, at the center of each atom, of course we have oh, the nucleus. And if you look closely at the nucleus, you'll see that inside that, oh, it's made out of tiny little things called protons and neutrons. And these protons and neutrons can even be oh, broken down further into quarks. But what the heck? Are these tiny quarking things made out of? Well, I tell you what, they're made out of something so small that it's a choking hazard to kids under three years old. I'm talking about tiny little jiggling strings. Yes, fundamental particles are essentially small wiggling strings and different vibrations of these strings produce different particles. Sort of like the notes on a piano, like maybe an electron sounds like an E. Sounding good, Electron. Uh, maybe a bee is made out of bees. Oh, <laughs> uh, Miley Cyrus, I tell you what, that's a D sharp. Oh, Miley with armpit hair, however, uh, that's a D flat. Yeah. Yeah, man, the world's just made of vibrations, man. Ooh. Oh, except the strings are so small, you can't even see them. Wow, that sounds like donkey's penis. You know, I don't remember seeing anything in Shrek, but uh, well, he has a few kids, so there must be something going on down there, and I don't need to know. But whether you can see them or not, string theory suggests that these uh, strings are real, actual objects wiggly jiggling in space. What are they made of? Well, they're made of themselves. It doesn't get any smaller. It's like uh, if you bought a pack of spaghetti and then on the ingredients label, it just said spaghetti. Ah, my mama's a recipe. What do the strings do? Well, uh, they do that vibrating thing that we talked about and make those different frequencies. They can stretch out and they could merge together or split apart like a magic trick. What good is all of that? Well, it means that the, the strings can interact and decay into different particles. You know, it's like when Hot Miley became Hairy Miley. Yeah. Uh, now, even though this might look a little odd at first glance, uh, this is actually mathematically perfect. That's right, these hairy little strings explain everything in the universe, precisely. Well, except for the fact that it says there should be 10 dimensions in the universe. Where'd they go? The only place I know you can see 10 dimensions is in Avatar 2. And those glasses are bloody massive. Wait, 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 wait. Why do these one dimensional strings need 10 whole dimensions to wiggle around in? Can't they just groove along in three dimensions like the world's smallest violin. Ah. Well, it turns out that they need 10 dimensions, that's nine spatial dimensions plus one for time, in order to wiggle in just a certain way to get massless particles to exist. Like photons and the all-elusive graviton. Ooh, I've got to have one of those. Well, all right then, but you know, I don't see these other six dimensions that we're meant to have. Uh, do you see them anywhere? Doc, why don't I see these other six dimensions? You're just thinking fourth dimensionally. Great Scott, he's right. Maybe these other six dimensions are so small and tiny that we can't see them. To illustrate this, I'll have to pull something out of my ass. Ugh. Okay, let's pretend that I'm a two-dimensional character. Uh, 
more two dimensional, this, this guy. Okay, I exist on this flat little plane where I've only got my lengthways and my heightways, and I'm, I'm happy just, just moving around, except little do I know there's actually a sneaky, tiny third dimension, just a little sliver right there on the edge, but my flat self doesn't even realize it because have a look at this. I go all the way to the left and then whoop, I've traveled through it and now I'm just in my two dimensions again. I, I, I didn't even notice a thing. From my perspective, it happens so fast, uh, a lot faster than that, um, but, that I don't even notice it. See, two dimensions, shoop, just two dimensions. Ah, but now have a look at this. If I were a little one dimensional string, I would be skinny enough to wiggle around and have a little good time in that teeny tiny dimension that my flat self can't. And that's what the, what the little tiny string theories might be doing in these six other dimensions, like, our 3D cells may be too big to notice these tiny six dimensions, but the little teeny weeny string can wiggle its heart out there. Uh, still, I don't know. Wiggling little donut strings, this is starting to sound a bit like donut earth theory. I mean, if I have to believe in 10 dimensions, I might as well believe that the earth is just another flavor in the whole Krispy Kreme galaxy. But there is one very compelling reason that many physical trainers believe that string theory is ultimately correct. And that is because it finally allows gravity to work at the very small scale. See, good old Einstein came up with a pretty good theory on how gravity worked, and it does work, and explains how gravity works with the planets and stuff. Ah, but if you use that same maths at the very small scale, at the quantum, quantum level, level. Well, it kind of glitches out and creates infinite feedback points where gravity keeps building up, building up, and till you have tiny little black holes everywhere. And as Hawking said, Black holes suck. Well, that's right. But string theory fixes that problem. Because do you remember those gravitons we mentioned? Well, if photons are like light particles, gravitons are gravity particles. Ugh, my brain hurt. Now, if these gravitons looked like the traditional way you'd imagine a particle, like a blue ball of Play-Doh, well, uh, all the complicated interactions that would happen with it would all come to a single point. And that's where you get those infinite, loopy, freaking black hole businesses happening, yeah. However, if that uh, particle and all those interactions were instead stretched along the length of a mm, little string, ah, well, now it doesn't infinitely build up into mega black hole business and therefore mm, string theory is correct. <laughs> uh, can they prove any of this? No, but uh, scientists are trying at the Large Hadron Collider where they're colliding hadrons, special particles, don't, don't worry about it for now. Anyway, the experiment goes that if there is this much energy before the collision and only this much after the collision, well, then maybe that uh, missing energy has gone wandering off into those other six tiny dimensions. It could prove that, or it could just prove that Jerry couldn't program the LHC VCR. Either way. What the f is that? I cleared trade three. And finally, what can you do with string theory? Nothing. Uh, but Michio Kaku, also known as Raiden from Mortal Kombat, he thinks that string theory could explain how the Big Bang happened, but not why it's so popular. Yeah, for that you'll need the large Sheldon Collider. Yeah, that still wasn't hard enough. And that is what string theory is, where everything and everyone you've ever loved is a wet little noodle. Wow, science ruins everything. Let me know what you'd like explained next, and until next time, well, I'm gonna wiggle myself into the next dimension. Here I go. Ooh, it's not working. Looked cooler at the start. No, nothing. All right, I'll just, I'll just walk there. Subscribe today. Please welcome Dr. Michio Kaku, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, you have been chosen to defend the realm of Earth in a tournament called Mortal Kombat. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> Is it, nothing can be done, it can there? There's nothing can be done, it's too late. Am I right about the that? The essence of Mortal Kombat is not about- Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, why not share it with a friend? 
And if you really liked it, why not become a premium member at funkytime.tv forward slash patriots. And out of my ass, here we have an atom. But the little little strings of wiggle waggle in the way, the little hearts out in there, and, and having dreams and adventures, and I don't know if they're sentient, that's another video. Gravitons are apparently gravity particles. And, and, and what will happen tomorrow? I have nothing further to teach you, Luke King.